understand that's what it means once a bear, always a bear. You will always be known, no matter how far you go and wide, you are Ricardo Gordon. He's tried. Birmingham Bears have come through the home team. The best side won this competition on their home ground. I don't know where 10 years have gone, it's absolutely flown by. Yeah. And that season does come back to you, the highlights of how we got there from, uh, from not being in no position to then getting into the quarterfinals down at Essex and then winning it here at Edgebass. It was a somewhat special season for us. Total through for a single, but it's Birmingham Bears are in the final. Biggest roar of the day so far, big home crowd of course, as you'd expect here at Edgebaston. My name is Ricardo Gordon, uh, fast bowler, part of the 2014, that was T20 Bless winning team. Like, for me, I came through the youth system as well. Um, and at that time, you, you, I didn't know I was going to become a pro. I wanted to be a pro, like desired it with desperation to become a professional. However, you weren't clear of how it was going to happen. 2012 became a pro, was injured with a stress and then 2013 played a little, uh, played a few big part games and whatnot. And then uh, 2014, the squad was doing really well. We had guys getting called up for England and we had a few injuries and I made my T20 debut game that year against Knotts. Uh, Choppy as a captain, you, you would have seen that we, through training, I was really working hard and working well on my one day skills and my death bowling skills and he, he said you know what I back you to get the job done against Knotts I did really well um, getting the wickets of Hales and Taylor against uh, really strong side and then down at uh, Chelmsford when got had a really uh, depleted bowling unit then I think Rankin got injured I think Barker was injured so then it was just like well who do we turn to and I think that's when Chopping gave, gave me the nod being young and naive at that time was was good for me because I didn't have no scar tissue, no trauma of playing against Essex down at Essex. So uh, I'm going down there, I read a few uh, articles and everyone was saying the cauldron because you know it's small, it's tight, the crowd's on top of you, and I was just like, I don't care, you know, I just want to play cricket and being chucked the ball and being called in at the last minute. I had no intentions, I had no idea I was going to play. Um, and then when you when you bowling against Jesse Ryder, Tender Scott, uh, Bopara, these are guys I grew up playing against. So it was just like well, watching. So then now to be playing against them, I was I was so excited to go out there and get the job done because we knew we could have made history that year. Should be out. Is out. The full toss will do. Forget the slow ball. Forget the Yorker. The length. The full toss, and it's picked out the man at midwicket. We we're quite a young team, and with Chopper as as our leader, he oozes his own self-confidence and that's your leader then in in that sense, when you train hard and he chucks you the ball, you, you kind of have that inner feeling that, you know what, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to run through a brick wall with him here. We're going, to, we're going to war and we're going to win and we're going to get it done because he didn't know when to say no. We would have lost games, but he said, you know what, if we're going to lose, we'll lose it our way. And in the end, it turns out and it worked for us because a lot of teams got caught off guard. So I think same way in that game where he chucked me the ball, all it was, it was like Choppy was like, look, you're going to bowl in the death. And I was like, in the death, <laughs> my inexperience. But uh, with the guidance of Jeets, Choppy, they said, look, wash your best skill, go out there, get the job done. Like just going through the history of it all, we hadn't won the trophy at that point. And we did well in the Friends Life, which was the 40 over format before that. Uh, but then in T20, we'd never quite seemed to pack the punch. But then this year with, I think we had defined roles. Everyone knew what they were doing. We backed each other really well. And if any time we didn't feel like, you know what, you're a little bit down, you just got reminded by someone said, this is your skill, this is your bag, go out there and nail it. So we had a real inner, in a belief and then that inner belief started to turn into knowing we knew that we could turn sides over because I remember when we played the likes of your uh, knots with an all-star batting lineup 
you know, Nazis are going to come at you hard. We had this thing where we said, you know what, we don't care how hard they come, we keep, we go back harder. And we just look to take wickets, look to take wickets. And that's what we did. And, I, and that's what we did in the semis against Surrey. They came hard at us and we just chipped away. We took wickets and we always stayed in the fight. And uh, in the end, 194 for four proved too much for a very strong Surrey side. And I don't think they'd have believed that a couple of months ago. They find themselves in the final. We're sitting out for the likes of Wokes, he was just, I felt like, you know what, it is what it is. England player, we are in a position to win a trophy and win a final. So to, to know that I contributed to get the team here was a big, was a big thing for me. And again, the excitement of just being around it all um, just took over because I was like, you know what, it is, it is what it is, as the kids say these days. But um, when you're not playing, you can, allow yourself to soak up everything what's going on but when you're out there in the middle you've got to block it all out and then Eric Hollies was rocking that day because we had to put down the mighty sorry for us with the with your likes of Ke Kevin Peterson and Jason Roy who was having a really good season that year and then to get past sorry and then in the finals when it came down to England's mighty Freddie Flintoff versus uh, our homegrown Chris Wolks it was a uh, it was something to behold while you sat on the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> you silly old devil. It's a proper nail-biting thing, you know, um, and the hair, uh, Eric Wallis was pumping and then I remember he hit a boundary and then it was just like, oh wow, where is this going to go? But then Wokesy held his nerve really well and got us over the line. Oh, he's tried. How many millions of kids around the world, or even within our county, to say, I've oh, played for Warwickshire, left a legacy because we were the first team to do it, contributed to that legacy and said, you know what, we actually won a trophy. That for me is absolutely amazing. Now, being released in 2016, it was, it, that was devastating for me because I was still doing really well at that time. Uh, so now, rolling on almost seven years later, it's the case of, right, what's it like coming back here? What, how did the people receive you while you come back here? And I understand that's what it means, once a bear, always a bear. You will always be known, no matter how far you go and wide, you are Ricardo Gordon, play for Warwickshire, and the club receives you well, like stuff like this, you know? It, that's what it means. You will always be a Warwickshire bear, no matter how far and wide you go. You can't detag yourself away from a prestigious club. <laughs>